Living Water Fellowship. Wow, it's great to see so many people here this morning, and welcome to those who are watching on Facebook. And I feel so short right here. I, I have to stand up here. <laughs> I have to stand up here where I can see everything. Go ahead, wherever. That's fine. Oh, no, don't remove that. Yeah. Jim likes it down there. Sorry, I, th- I didn't realize what you were doing. Thank you, Jim, or John. It's John, not first John, not second John, but John. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I'm always going to remember his name. (laughs) Um, We are so glad you're here today, and we thank you that uh, you've decided to join us in the sanctuary today, Um, those of you that are here and and, uh, excited to be here. Uh, First of all, our men's group meets at 9.30 Sunday morning, right back here in the Sunday school room. And how many people did you have today, Carl? A lot. 12 or 13 men in there? That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Um, so that's really a a blessing. The ladies' group meets on Saturday mornings uh, at 7 a.m. at the Fortner House, and we meet from 7 to 8, and we're studying the book of Luke. Um, So if you would like to join us for that, you're welcome to do that. Um, Regarding tithes and offerings, we have an offering box in the back. It's locked, Uh, uh, and there's tithe envelopes on the side if, if the Lord touches your heart to give, then that's, that's the place to do it, or online. We also have an online giving at uh, pwlivingwater.org, um, so you can go there and give as well. Uh, Blast, many of you may have noticed this past week, we moved Blast from Tuesday night to Thursday night. For those of you that don't know what Blast is, it's on Facebook, so you can look us up at uh, PW Living Water um, and find, a, find our, a picture of our church here. And it's also on YouTube. I'm told it's on YouTube. On YouTube, it's at PW Living Water Fellowship, all one word. Okay, so if you type in all one word, you should be able to, to find that. Um, and what BLAST is, is it stands for Building Lives Around Sound Truth, and it's about a 30-minute uh, devotion time with the Lord. And uh, so we're able to put that on Facebook for those that aren't here uh, in the sanctuary on Sundays, but also for anybody that wants to just stay home and and watch a little bit of a, a devotion online. Um, we also, on Tuesday nights, have begun a new study uh, called Letters to the Church, and it's by it's a Francis Chan study, and we're uh, talking about um, what the church looks like now, today, and what we need, what we can do to make it more like the church that was in the first century, because we've changed a lot. Anyway, um, you're welcome to join that. That uh, program, that's at 6.30 Tuesday nights. That's at the Fortner House. If you need an address or phone number, please see me uh, or please see Debbie at the end of the service, and we'll get you going in the right direction on that. Next week is the leadership meeting right after church. So if you're part of the leadership team, you'll want to stick around, and uh, Martha's Table will be providing the lunch for that meeting. So make sure you join us. Uh, Underneath the tables over in the coffee area is some boxes that you can put some canned goods or dry goods, uh, non-perishable foods or clothing for uh, the rescue mission or for the YWCA. And Charlie has offered to go ahead and take those boxes, and what he'll do is take them and drop them off, and we'll start a whole uh, whole other row of boxes, and we'll just uh, keep giving to those that are in need. All righty. Uh, what else? I had to have a book now for announcements. It used to be just a little sticky note, but can't keep up with them. <laughs> um, over here in the corner, we, we've nicknamed it Carl's Corner, but really, <laughs> Carl's in the back at the sound booth there. We want to just remind you that if you need prayer uh, after the service or if you need some quiet time after the service to go have communion uh, with your family, and maybe we didn't, like, we do it corporately, but there are times where maybe you want to do that as a family or by yourself or whatever. It's a quiet corner over here that you can go and have prayer and quiet time after church. Um, wanted to mention that. And um, let's see. Uh, so we mentioned Tuesday. We mentioned Thursday. Wednesday morning, I'm sending out text messages to y'all. I think I've got everybody in the church, but if I don't, please let me know. I'll be happy to send you a text message. It's a quick little thing I call Wednesday in the Word, and I'll send you a little scripture just to get you through the the hump of the week, Wednesday hump day, okay? And then, lastly, Easter service. We're going to have a sunrise service 
at Jim and Art, my house. Um, I have to be careful how I say that. It used to be my house or Patty's house. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, we're going to have a sunrise service at our house uh, at 6.30 in the morning. And then we're going to have our regular service here. Okay, so those of you that can't make it Easter morning early um, for a little service, we're also going to have breakfast there. Um, and then we're going to run over here and get the praise band together, and we're going to have Easter service here at our regular time. Okay? So that way we can still be live on Facebook for all of you to see an Easter service, and we can also have a sunrise service for those interested in having that. So we're going to have two services. So... Anyway, I think that's all of our announcements this morning. Um, oh, thank you, Helen. One more. Um, there is a card here for Rex. Those of you that know Rex, he was an elderly gentleman that would come in by himself and, and sit. His wife passed away probably two, three months ago. Um, and uh, his family is moving him to Castle Rock so that he can be closer to his family and they can take care of him. And uh, my understanding is he has an apartment like a couple doors down from his son. And um, so we have a card for him. I'm going to hand this to Helen. She can pass it around if you'd like to sign a card, a goodbye card, so that he can go and be with his family up in Castle Rock. Um, if you're interested in signing that, she has that. And uh, I think that covers everything this morning. Worship team, if you'll join me up here, we'll go ahead and worship the Lord today. Oh, I, for, I need to mention this, too. Um, we have a special guest with us this morning. Uh, I mentioned John. Not first John, not second John. Uh, <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't catch. This is Mike, right, Mike? Yeah. Okay. And Mike's playing bass with us today. And Justin, if you're watching, we didn't replace you, we promise. Okay. Um, Justin usually plays bass or guitar, whatever we need. And Justin's in Denver this morning with family. And so this was an opportunity to let Mike come and see if uh, he can play with us this morning and, and praise the Lord with us. And we're so grateful to have him. And uh, we're going to have to, you know, Matt, we may end up having to build another part of the stage <laughs> so that we can move out and add another guitar up here and, uh, and see what we can do to grow our team here. So this is really cool. Bobby said we go up Oh, we tears. go up. <laughs> We'll put, we'll put the drummer up first. How's that? <laughs> um, but anyway, it's good to have Mike. And, and um, Justin, we, we miss you. We hope you come back uh, next week uh, and join us again. And I think that should do it. So let me get rid you know, of this here. You know, it was awesome. Uh, I want you to stand with us. But uh, when we get ready to praise the Lord. But what was awesome was when Mike called me, the first thing out of his mouth is, you know, I have a heart for God. And uh, he does. Him and his friend, John, first John, not second John, but John. Um, <laughs> third John for God. And we're just and so uh, so thankful that uh, they came. Yeah, we want to welcome you too. I didn't catch your name. I'm sorry? Jamie. Yeah. Um, Mike's wife, Jamie. Please say hi to her. Awesome. Love having you. Okay.
see Wonderful and full of grace Who is this King so worthy? Nations here and kingdoms praise Jesus the you alone Lord Jesus thank you for all that you've given to us thank you for your blessings that you just shower upon us thank you Lord that it's nothing but your blood that saved us No 
sometimes it's fun to do those older songs, and this last week we had a request for an older song, a contemporary song. So we hope this brings back some memories for you, too. of our heart. We want to hear your message this morning. We want to hear from you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the opportunity to praise your name, not just this morning, Lord, with all these dear saints, but with, with you. We want to praise you all week long and all day long. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us. Thank you. Thank you for saving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Pastor Ron and kids. Boys and girls, come right on up. Yeah. Good morning. Girl power. <laughs> yeah. Come on, guys. Come on up. Awesome. Awesome. Now, as always, I like to read the scripture first. In 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
Now, we sometimes you hear this big word here at church, and it's called Trinity. So what in the world is the Trinity? Well, that's a great concept in the Christian faith, as us as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, first of all, you take Trinity. Now, we're in school now, getting an English lesson. Try is, means three. So Trinity, there are three members of the Trinity. Trinity, who are they? A lot of people get confused by this, you know. Uh, I don't think anybody totally understands it, but in a limited way, we're going to try to explain it this morning. Now, we believe in only one God, yet there are three personalities. I like to think of it as God having three faces with three different personalities. So let me see if I can explain that to you. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, it kind of sounds contradictory, one God, yet three names. How does this work? Well, let's do it like this. Let's say that this leaf right here, yes. Sometimes at the night, I'll see a big bright star brighter than the rest, and I'll think that's God. Ah, okay. So let's look at this leaf, all right? So this leaf, let's say that this is like God the Father, who is the creator and who watches over us all the time. Now then, let's say that this leaf is God the Son, Jesus. He is the one that gave himself for us, died for us. He's our high priest, and he defends us in every thing that we need to, and need to be done. Now, the last leaf is the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Now, uh, the Holy Spirit, he's not, and you may say, well, what's a comforter? Uh, well, have you ever been uh, maybe real sad and feeling down, and you go get in your daddy's or your mama's lap, and they hold you up close? They comfort you. Well, that's what the Holy Spirit does. He inspires, he anoints, gives special ability of, uh, of uh, understanding to, to us. When Pastor Jim speech, speaks, sometimes the Holy Spirit really speaks through him and gives him things that it's not in, not in his sermon. Same way with me. Now we have three leaves, but yet it's one clover. It's one organism. Three in one. The leaves of the clover never argue with each other. They never fuss with each other. They never try to see who's better than the other. They seem to understand what is best for the clover, and all leaves are equal. Now, it's same with God, with the Trinity. God the Son, or God the Father, never does anything without uh, conferring with God the Son. And God the Son never does anything without conferring, conferring with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit never does anything without conferring with God the Father and God the Son. All three are totally unified and united. And do you want to have peace on, there, on earth? Then don't like, try to be like, you know, to be better than everybody else. The Trinity exists because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are unified. They don't argue, but they're all in total agreement. So, if we ask the Holy Spirit to help us to be more like God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and be humble servants to serve other people, then we'll have peace on the earth. Um, so let's pray and ask uh, the, the Holy Spirit to help us understand the Trinity. Father, we thank you that you have had kind of opened a window for us to see what the Trinity is. May we understand that all three of your personalities, all three of your faces are one God and that you're here to help us to be great believers, follow your will, bring peace on earth, and to show love of God to our neighbors and friends. In Jesus' name.
go back to yours. Actually, you're going to children's church. You can go now. It off. Here, here we go. Can you hear me now? Okay. Praise God. I am glad, so very glad to see all of you here this morning. There's nothing like coming to church. I get excited. I started about on Sunday evening or Saturday and getting ready to go on Sunday. No, I'm talking about when we get home. Yeah, the previous Sunday. I love to praise God and worship God. Okay, we're going to be talking about Revelations this morning. Yeah, yeah the last book in the Bible. And uh, I'm going to go to God in prayer, and we're going to get started on this. But what I would like to do first, as always, is let me get to where I need to be here, church. I'm excited about this study um, because... I have not heard anybody preach on Revelations. Ever. I've, heard, I've been to Bible studies, and there's been some talk on it, but I've never heard anybody preach. It doesn't make me special, but I felt God was calling me to, to, to do a series on Revelations. Um, let's pray, and then I want to get to our chapters, and we'll read that standing up together. Father God, Please, Almighty God, take us to where you want us to go. This lesson as we start in Revelation, I, it's a, I don't know, a book of hope, Father. And I'll say it again, but this is also a book that tells us we don't already know who wins. And I love this book. I pray that people's hearts are filled with the Holy Spirit. Give us discernment, give us wisdom, and understanding, Father. Thank you for allowing me to stand up here and preach your word. What an honor, what a privilege. These things I ask in your mighty name, amen. Okay, I want to make a few marks, remarks. What is the book of Revelation? What does it mean? Why was it written? You know, it seems people ask these questions all the time. I don't, I don't understand it. I, and I said earlier, I have never been in a church where it was, there was a sermon on it. You know, I remember several years back, there was a person in a church that I attended, and he went to the senior pastor and he asked them, he says, how come you never preach on Revelations? The pastor said, when I understand it, I'll preach on it. And I'm thinking, don't you need to preach on what you do know? My, my take on it is this. As a pastor, we need to preach the entire book. Okay? Okay, we need to preach the entire... I think it's really, really important. Now, I want you to understand that the book of Revelations is not a book of doom and gloom. It is a book of prophecy and hope. It really is. And if we, like I said earlier, if we believers do not know who wins, this will tell you who wins in the end. Okay, church? We should not be afraid of the book of Revelation, but we should embrace it. It's filled with a lot of imagery, symbolism, and at times it can cause us to wrinkle our brows and go, what you talking about, Willis? I get that. But you know what, church? It's the only book in the Bible that God says, if you read it, I will bless you. He's going to bless you when you read the Bible, but he specifically said, if you read this book, I'm going to bless you. Okay? What I prayerfully want to do is talk to you about what God says and reveals in this book. I've researched. I did a ton of research and have for a long time and prayed a lot 
and ask God to lead me to give you information that not only helps you understand this incredible book better, but to enrich our lives to God's truth about what he says about the end times. There's a ton of information out there. Some of you in here are like sponges with that stuff. <gasps> what did I say? What did I say? That's fine. But let's see what God says. Let's open our hearts and minds, allowing God to speak to us. And I would ask you, if there's something that you don't quite understand, call me. Let's pray together for wisdom, discernment, and understanding. I'd love it. And I could sit there and go, ooh, I didn't know that. Remember, church, God did not reveal everything to us. That was his choice. He didn't have to. But he did reveal what he wanted us to know. Okay? Don't become discouraged, confused, or try to read more or less into what we're going to be talking about. Trust, let me tell you, trust what God is revealing to your heart. Remember, there are many different interpretations of Revelation. A ton of them out there. But this is what God gave me to share with you. So, if you will stand with me, we're going to read, and I'm reading from, I hope you put in New King James Version. You did not? You did? That's too hard to switch? Okay. New King James Version. I think it's just a little bit more palatable here. Okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and do this. That's, that's, that's uh, King James, isn't it? Okay. New King James next time? Okay. okay. Uh, huh? I can read it from here, too, if I wanted to. No. All right. So we'll, I'll read it from my Bible. I have it written over here. Let's, let's read this together. Or we can. Okay, it says this, and we're going to go from 1 to 20. Let's get this. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show, he says, shew, but show his servants, same thing, things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Okay? who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all the things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, there it is, and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Church, Jesus is coming back. Make no mistake about it. Okay, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from, there's Kansas, washed, washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, I love this. I might get a little emotional here. You ever known me to get a little emotional? Whatever. Okay. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Wow. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, this, we're going to be doing a song called Even So Come. Amen. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty, the Alpha and Omega, I, John, who, was all, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit of the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and to Pergamos, and to Tyatira, and to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to La Laodicea. Twelve. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. 
And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed in garment down to his foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto the fine brass, if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as a sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand and seven stars out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Can you imagine that, church? And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which I am, thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. Last verse, church. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Okay, you may be seated. Thank you for standing to hear God's word. So, okay. What does all this mean? What does this mean? Let's look at these passages of Scripture just a little bit closer here. First, church, I'm going to give you just a little bit of stuff here. You need to know that Revelation in the New Testament has a little title in Greek, meaning apocalypse, apocalypse of John, okay? End time stuff. The word apocalypse means revelation. It comes from the Greek word apocalypsis, which literally means to pull the lid off of something. Think about it if you're in your kitchen and you're cooking something, you have a lid on it, and you don't really know, you come in, maybe your wife is cooking or uh, somebody's cooking, you come in and you don't know what's in there, so what do you do? You do what I do, and she'll say, get out of there. But I look in there to see. I want to reveal to see what's in there. Okay, I thought that was a good analogy. Listen to me. So when we look at these first 20 passages, we find that Revelation reveals a prophetic passages in the Old Testament. The Old Testament foretold future events which will be fulfilled. Those old guys, man, they were faithful. It also shows how the events predicted in Matthew 24... Four, three, I won't have them up there, but what that talked about is about tribulations and catastrophes, okay? He also talked about, and rumors of war, he also talked about in Matthew 25, 1, 4, 6, when the Son of Man comes in all his glory. You could read all this, it's a long passage. And then 2 Thessalonians 1, 11, patience and faith in trials and tribulations. So there were three things they were talking about there. The book of Revelation begins with John understanding that God has given him the revelation of Jesus Christ. John greets his readers like the Apostle Paul with grace and peace from Jesus Christ. He identifies Jesus as trustworthy, eternal, and sovereign. Mm. He talks about Jesus as having glory and power forever because of his love and redemption. I love this. John views believers as appointed by the Lord. Think about this. To be a kingdom of priests, to serve with him. Serve with the Father and rule with him. Are you kidding me? He's going to allow us to do that? Wow. Let's talk about this. In the first chapter of Revelation, we read that Jesus appears to the apostle John. Okay, um, he was banished to the Rome to the island of Patmos. Uh, Isaac, can you put that uh, first one up, please? I wanted you to look at something. Okay, there's Patmos, okay? And if you look over here, you see uh, the churches. This is in Turkey. Antolia, which is western Turkey, is what this is, what we're looking at. But you can see the churches right there, church. Uh, Pergamum. Tyatira, Smyrna, Ephesus, and then you can see uh, uh, Laodicea, Philadelphia, and Sardis. 
John was way out there. This right in here, guys, is the Aegean Sea. Okay? Pretty interesting stuff. Can you put the one on, uh, on John's, uh, uh, where it says Patamos, uh, where his cave? I found this interesting. We'll get back into this. This <laughs> was amazing to me. Some of this stuff made me weep. This is where the cave they believe John lived in when he was on the island. How about that? And there's some things in there. If you go over there, you can see it over there, uh, uh, where he was. John was banished to the island of Patmos. Why, church? Because of his faith. If you, sometimes if you believe in Jesus, people will step away from you. They'll banish you. They don't want to be around you. You're too weird. But I'll be weird for Jesus. I don't care. I don't care. Okay. All right. Uh, God, through an angel. This is sometimes confusing. Did, was God speaking? or was Je No. The Bible specifically says it was through an angel talking to his servant John. Clear that one up. So, and he said, I want you to tell John to write about what he saw. He wanted him to write about the present. I love this. He wanted to write about the past and the future. And what, I, or what will take place in the future. John describes what he sees and hears when Jesus appeared to him and told him to write the seven letters to the church. John also describes, I love this, in his glorified form, these descriptive suggestions, he's talking about Christ, of power and wisdom and majesty. Okay, the churches are represented in the passages as individual lampstands. Can you put that up? The lampstands? I thought this was really cool. Okay. Oh, this, it's, it's the other one, yeah. There we go. Lampstands, the churches. And there's Jesus right in the middle of them. You don't think Jesus is involved with his church? Yes, he is. Verse 4, John talks about the seven spirits of God. I want you to understand, when John was seeing these things, church, he was seeing them in his century and seeing our century. That would be kind of strange, wouldn't it? So he's explaining things the way he knows how to explain it in his century. Okay? Listen to me. I said he talked about the seven spirits. You can put that other one back up, please. People ask me, what is that? Well, the seven spirits are the Holy Spirits, but like us, God has, the Holy Spirit has attributes. Look at this. I thought this was phenomenal. Biblical scholars, yay, the smart people, and historians, and way down at the end of the line, Jim Young, believe that the seven spirits are God's Holy Spirit. And these are attributes of God. This made sense to me. Look at this, church. Love, wisdom, knowledge, faith, hope, righteousness, and judgment. Now, don't confuse yourself with this being the triune. No. This was the seven spirits of the Holy Spirit. Okay? I thought that was interesting. Okay, and here it says again, insight, prophecy, helpfulness, service or ministry, instruction, which is teaching, encouragement, generosity, giving, guidance, leadership, and compassion. Okay, guidance and leadership are together. Sevenfold, listen to me, may also relate to the biblical understanding of the number seven. God's number or holy number is seven. Okay, there are other things there. The sevenfold spirit of God could be the perfect spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. The sevenfold spirit of God has absolutely nothing, when I said before, with the triune nature of God. You know what that is. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay? There are a lot of images in Revelation. The number seven represents the fullness of the Spirit abiding in God's throne room. All right. So, says John was in the Spirit. A lot of people have questions about that. What do you mean John was in the Spirit? Well, this is expressed four times in John 1.10, 4.2, 17.3, and 21.10. It is widely believed, I'm going to tell you what I found out, 
that John's spirit was physically taken to heaven. This happened several times in the Bible. While his body remained on Patmos. Okay? Um, people say, well, he was just having a vision. No, he was physically taken to heaven while his body remained there. The seven churches of Asia in Revelation. Here they are. I just wanted you to see this a little closer. Again, this is Turkey, and there are the churches right there. People say, well, why? Why them churches? I'm sure there were other churches. But I think these were the churches that were really important in what God was working with in particular. Let's look at this. John's description. John talked about the seven churches or the early churches of Christianity. All of them were located in Asia Minor, all right, which is now Turkey. Um, the churches in this context refers to the community or local, local congregation of Christians living in each city. I think these were big churches. They were doing some good things, and some of them weren't doing not so good. Jesus wanted to specifically speak to these churches. All right. Let's look at this. Now, John wants to talk about how Jesus looked. Wow. I read and prayed over this. John's description of Jesus is incredible. He says, uh, He saw someone like the Son of Man in the midst of the seven churches of the seven lampstands. We already saw that earlier. The lampstand, remember, represents the churches. I will tell you this, the Son of Man is a messianic term that relates to Jesus in Israel. Okay? But it also reveals his humanity. He is truly man. Get this. And guess what? He's truly God. Okay? I love this. The prophet Daniel predicts the dominion, glory, and a kingdom will be given to the Son of Man. John's reference to the Son of Man is symbolic. It's a symbolic description of the risen, glorified Jesus. Okay? It says he wears a long white robe. Wow, I thought about that and I read about that. Well, that depicts a judge. Jesus is a judge or priest or maybe both. He's, it also says the golden sash that he wears symbolizes purity. You can look this up in seven, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21 and 1 Peter 2.22. John describes Jesus' hair. This was interesting to me. As having hair like white wool and snow. Hmm. The prophet Daniel wrote that he saw the ancient one, the ancient of days, describing him as having hair that was white, suggesting he's wise, experienced, dignified, authoritative, pure, and glorious. Wow. This is the one I love, though. John also wrote that Jesus' eyes were like a flame of fire. I imagine. I was thinking about that. If you were to look into the eyes of Jesus, no one has seen the Lord. And you could see him. I bet his eyes would be a flame of fire. Look right through you. Nothing is hidden, church. Nothing is hidden from his sight. He's like an all-seeing judge. He judges righteously with no partiality. Okay? Also, his judgments are pure and right. No one can feign innocence in Jesus and succeed with hypocrisy. He can see right through us. Everything we do, Every thought that we have, he knows it. Then John goes on to describe his feet. This one kind of, hmm, what was this all about? He said they were like burnished brass refined in a furnace. And what I found out, church, was a re reference to brass that is, it's, it's turned white when it's been that heated that hot. The word for burnished is unique. And it seems to only occur, get this, in the book of Revelation. It appears to be a compound of the Greek words for metals, such as bronze and brass. This made sense. John's explanation that Jesus' appearance was something like a glowing furnace. Wow. A reference correlation between the color of Jesus' feet and the bronze altars, think about this, used in the temple for making sacrifices for sin and for expressing God's judgment for sin. I'm like, wow. 
You never thought of that. John reports that Jesus' voice was like the roar of many waters. That'll get your attention. Huh? When he spoke, it was more than E.F. Hutton. I'm telling you, when Jesus spoke, everyone listened. It was in Isaiah 42, 13, he associates a loud voice with that of a shout of a warrior as a mighty man shouting against his enemies. Jesus will show himself mighty against his foes. If you put the one with the, him holding the seven stars in his, please. I love this. Look at this. John saw Jesus holding seven stars in his right hand. And verse 20 explains that the seven stars of the angels, and listen to me on this, of the seven churches to which John was commanded to write. The stars our angels may represent the chief elders of the seven churches, actual angelic beings, messengers on behalf of the church. I believe God had an angel for each of those churches. I believe God has an angel for this church. Therefore, it is possible that the reference here is to pastors or church members for correspondence. Listen to me on behalf of their respective congregations or of actual angels. I think the important thing here is to understand that Jesus is holding us in his right hand. Listen to me. He's holding his believers in his right hand and no one can snatch them from him. I think that's what he's doing here. Okay? No one can touch his believer. The other one, please. John, where, the, the sword, please. You got it up there? You know, when, when Susan saw this, she goes, you're going to put that up there? Wow, that's scary. It's kind of. But I wanted you to understand something here, church. And this is symbolism. And I love this. John also saw a sharp two-edged sword proceed from Jesus' mouth. Okay? John, the two-edged sword, get this, references what, church? The Word of God. See, you know what? In the end, that battle... I don't believe we're going to be standing there with swords and fighting. We may be on our white horses with the Lord out front, but I don't believe we're going to be mm, 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 swashbuckling out there. I think God's going to speak it, and it's done. He's going to destroy his enemy with his voice. Sharper than any two-edged sword, Jesus' voice. We're not going to have to worry about that. Now, listen to me. I don't know if you are pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib. It doesn't matter, church. You know, I think pre-trib because it's our best option. But I believe in pan-trib, whatever pans out. I'm not going to worry about that. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about that. God has that under control. But I believe he will speak the word. And they're gone. Gone. This is awesome. Remember, John had a witness a similar sight. The other thing is, John sees Jesus' face, and he said it shone as the brightest part of the sun. Man, remember, church, John had witnessed this when? When he went up on the mountain with Jesus. Went up on the mountain, Jesus was transfigured into heaven. He said he shone bright. Now, here's the deal. And we're going to get deeper and deeper into this. This will be a great study. But here's what I want you to understand, really. How can we as Christians relate to the book of Revelation right now? Some of us did not like, and I'm not being political here, really, President Trump. Some of us do not like President Biden. I will tell you one thing, though. Trump has already fulfilled... One of the last prophecies in the Bible. Really? Yeah. 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 Moving the U.S. Embassy in Israel back to Jerusalem. Okay? Recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. 
No other president in history did this. No one's done this. But Donald Trump did in December 2017. This part of estatology, wow, the expectation, which is of things to come, the return of the Jewish people to their ancestral homeland, fulfilled a divine prophecy. We are not a messianic church. Some of you may uh, um, um, have some thoughts about that, and that's great. We are a Christian believing church. We believe in the word of God, but we do support the Jewish nation. We do. I'm going to say something else. At the end, when you look, let's see who's up there. Our name is not even there. Huh? Why? We do and need to support the Jewish nation. You know, church, what we're experiencing right now is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm going to tell you. I don't believe we've seen our last pandemic. I don't believe this corona or corny virus, as I call it, was the, was the end of ends. I think it might have been a warning that we need to get our stuff together. I think it might have been Jesus saying, okay, here I am. Now what you going to do? Wake up. I think we're going to see a lot more pandemics and natural disasters. It's predicted in the Bible. Rumors of war and war. Wow. The book of Revelation seems to be unfolding, church, right in front of our eyes right now. Make no mistake about it. Oh, I don't, I don't believe it. You better wake up and believe it. You better pay attention to it. Not to the point that you're so preoccupied that you cannot pray, you cannot witness, you can't be an apostle for Jesus Christ. But you need to know what's going to happen. I think it's important too. You know, we can sit here and say we're shocked in our world by the state of our immorality. The boundaries of sin, sin seem to get wider and wider, church. Everything is okay. Doesn't matter what you do, what you say, as long as it makes you feel good. Watch out. There's going to come a time when God says, enough. And I'm thinking about two cities that he said, enough. And he burned them to the ground. I'm thinking about a time with the ancient Israelites when they're tramping around in the desert there, hollering about, we don't have any water, we don't have no food. And they were so sinful, Jesus opened up the ground and poof, swallowed a bunch of them up. Pay attention to God. That's what I can tell you. The line between right and wrong has slowly been erased by society. You don't have to really look at the papers and stuff. You can, but you can tell just in your neighborhood and things. Nobody wants to go to church anymore. It's your choice. But I think people need to be together to pray, to read scriptures. I think we should never forsake the gathering. The, the, the line between right and wrong has slowly been pushed further and further. Listen to me. iPads, online schooling. I hate that, by the way. Anyway. Television, pop culture. Get this. Witchcraft has taken a surge. Spiritualism. A new age believes. Listen to me. Are exalted. Even among professing Christians. What is going on, church? Have we come so far to the left that we can't see the right where God is standing? Come here, guys. Come back to me. He said that to the ancient Israelites all the time. Come back to me. And I've said this. If you come back to me, God says this, and I've said it in this church many times, I will heal your nation. He will. It's not that hard. 
what we need to do as Christians is take time to reevaluate ourselves. I think we do. Reevaluate ourselves, our churches, the way we live our lives. Do we want to keep going in the same direction we're going? Are we going to look at God and say, change me, oh God. Change my heart today. I don't want to be the same as I was yesterday. I do not. I do not, church. We had an incredible Bible study the other night. One of the dear saints over there said, and I just love this lady, she said, it's about love. It's about love. She is right. It is about love, because if we can't love others, this doesn't matter. If we can't show a Christ-like heart in life, none of this stuff matters. Prophecy and stuff. Things are out the window. The book of Revelation is good to study, church. I'm not saying that. But I think our time would be better spent in prayer, mm -hmm. living a Christ-like life. Get this one, being in total submission to God. Not partially submitted. You know what we do as Christians? God, come into my heart. Okay, Jim, I will. But you know what, God? Don't, don't go to that part in my heart. That's mine, and I, I'm going to keep that to myself. I don't want you changing that. That, I, I, no, you can't have the keys to that side. He wants all of us, all of our heart, our very lives, everything. Jesus gave everything. And he didn't have to. He could have come down off that cross. They mocked him about it. Hey, if you're the Christ, come down off the cross. He should have and just got back on, I think. Sometimes. Come down, zap, 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 and get back up. I'm being silly, but I'm telling you, he hung up there because of love. Because of love. And I think what this dear lady was saying the other night, that's the key. Thought about it all night. The book of Revelations is good to study. Submit ourselves to God. What God wants. What does God want for us? People say, well, he wants me to be happy. Well, yes, he does. He wants me to have things. He wants to bless you and take care of you for all your needs, but he didn't say he was going to give you, like was said in the men's group, a Rolls Royce. He might give you a hoopty. He might give you a hoopty to drive. And you should thank God that you got a hoopty, because there's people out there walking. God wants for us, get this, to witness to others. This is what we need to do, church. Bringing them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I was looking for a closing line when I put this in my wife. said, to the, bring us to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You need to be a preacher. No. <laughs> Seriously, that's what it's all about. We need to tell others about Jesus. I like Brother Mike this morning. Him and John are bold. I fired up that men's group. And I love that. I love that. It's okay to be, love Jesus, guys. Because I tell you what, he loves us. He loves us. Again, I'm going to leave you with this. God wants for us to be witnesses to others. Bring them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Can we do that? I know some of you here and here will tear it up about that. Tell others about Jesus. I can't say it enough. In love. If you don't know about the Bible and you're stumbling around, you know what you need to do? Tell them what God did for you. Tell them your testimony.
Well, I don't know a lot in this, but you know what God did for me? He saved me. Brother Mike, stage four cancer. He healed me, he told us this morning. Hope you don't mind, Brother Mike. He healed me, he said. I don't have anything in me. You don't think that we have a God that takes care of us and serves us and wants the best for us? He does. It hurts me when I hear preachers say, one told me the other day, oh, miracles. I mentioned this briefly last week. Miracles, no. They used to happen. Well, my gosh. What are you talking about? It used to happen. They happen right now. They happen right now. God will restore families. He will restore people who are sick. He will bring you to your knees in prayer and submission to him. He will. But you know what the cost is? Asking. Oh, ask him. Well, that's hard. I don't, you know, he's up there and I'm here. No, he's right here. Right here. Right here, church. We ask him. Hallelujah. God says, come to me. Come to me with boldness. Not timidity. Lord, uh, I know you're up there, but uh, I know you're busy. He should slap us upside our heads when we come to him like that. <clears throat> come to God with a fever in your heart and fire. Lord, change me. Save me. Lift me up. He wants the best for you. We're going to continue next week in Revelation. We're going to talk about the churches and all kinds of stuff. But keep in mind, as we learn, the most important thing is to be a witness for Christ. Bringing others to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father God, thank you for what you put in my heart to teach and preach this morning. Help us to understand that you are God and you can do anything. Lift us up, Lord, to a higher place. Set our feet on holy, holy ground. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being who you are, our Lord and our Savior. In your mighty name we ask these things. Amen. song. I guess you could kind of say it's an end time song. You can stand with us. Stand with us, please, church. Lord Jesus
justice All will be new Your name forever Faithful and true Jesus is coming soon Like a bride waiting for a groom We'll be a church ready for you every heart Longing for our King We sing even so come Lord Jesus come Even so come Lord Jesus come God will wait We wait for you We just wait on you Lord Jesus Waiting for you to return God we wait Yes You're coming soon Come soon Lord Jesus God we wait We wait for you you are coming. You are coming soon. Thank you for teaching us to wait on you, Lord Jesus, to be looking for you, to be reading your scripture, to be studying, but more importantly, Lord, to be going out there and reaching people for you, Lord Jesus, because we know that you're not coming back until the last person is saved, whoever that is. And Lord, we need to be about your work. We need to be going out and doing the great commission that you called us to do, and that is to bring others to belief in you. And we can do that through the love that you have given us, through the love that you have taught us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. And we, we pray, Lord, that you help us this week as we go forward to just um, smile and love on one another, uh, love on the people around us, the people we work with, and teach them about Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. Have a great week. Peace.